In this video, we're going to continue our discussion about MIDI and talk specifically about some of the parameters and values and the actual MIDI specification that defines what MIDI is and how it's used. So as we mentioned in earlier tutorials, MIDI data is essentially just instructions that you are sending your sound module or synthesizer either from another synthesizer or from your MIDI sequencer to instruct your synthesizer as to what to play. So what are some of those specifications or instructions that might be sent? The first data that's sent is going to be information about your note that you're playing. So if you're playing a note like this, you're going to be sending what's called a note on command. That note on command will also have information about which pitch it is that you're actually playing. So you're sending a note on command, and that note on command will contain uh, the pitch information as well as the velocity at which you struck the key. And the length of the note, how long you hold it, will be determined by the note off command that's received or sent via MIDI when you release the key. So note on, which will contain pitch data as well as velocity data, and note off. There's also one other parameter uh, that can be sent, and that is called aftertouch. Aftertouch essentially is what's happening to the key between your note on command and your note off command. So if I play here and then after I after the note on command is sent, if I add pressure like I'm doing right now, this this particular synth patch isn't set up to receive aftertouch, but it is sending aftertouch signals based on the pressure I apply on the key. So aftertouch information is sent after your note on and before your note off command. The MIDI specification states that for each of these values that we just discussed or talked about, each of these parameters, each of them has to have some type of value that we assign to them. So for example, in the case of velocity, the MIDI specification says that the values for velocity can be anywhere from 0 to 127. Pitch also states that for the pitch of an instrument, 0 to 127. Okay, so a lot of the parameters or values assigned to individual instructions sent via MIDI have this value associated between 0 and 127. You'll learn real quick in MIDI that this number is very important because almost everything in MIDI has a value from 0 to 127. So we could describe our pitch in terms of 0 to 127, so that's obviously going to give us the full range of the keyboard because a standard piano has 88 keys, so it actually gives us more notes than the piano. In addition to this, we can describe our velocity in terms of 0 to 127, the softest velocity being 1, maybe something like that, real soft, and the hardest being 127. So we describe, in this case, our pitch and our velocity by using values from 0 to 127. So let's look at some of these uh, parameters and their values. So I'm going to record some MIDI data. Okay, now let's actually look at this MIDI data. We're going to look at it in a different way. We're going to look at it in an event list so we can actually see all of the MIDI information. So here is our note on information. 
Here is the event information, so it gives us our pitch and our velocities. And then here's our note off information. So it gives you a good idea of how note on, note off, velocity, pitch, aftertouch can be used to recreate a performance in MIDI. The MIDI specification also allowed for something called continuous controllers. A lot of times you'll just see it abbreviated as CC data for continuous controller data. A continuous controller in the MIDI specification allows us to control additional data that we may want to send to our synthesizer. So for example, things like our modulation wheel setting or our pitch bend settings or maybe the overall volume of our synthesizer or maybe how our synthesizer is panned from left to right or maybe the tuning information or tuning data. There's a lot of additional information other than our note on, note off, pitch, velocity, and aftertouch data that we may want to consider sending to a synthesizer or recording on a MIDI sequencer. All of that data constitutes continuous controller data. In your reading, there is a graph that gives you all of the defined continuous controllers based on the MIDI specification. Amazingly enough, there are 127 different continuous controllers that are available for you to use. Some of them are predefined. So for example, I know that controller 10 is pan. I also know that controller 7 is volume. The reason why is because these are the ones you use so much or the most. Controller 1 is the modulation wheel. Controller 64 is the sustain pedal, which obviously as a piano player or a keyboard player, you're going to use a fair amount. So all these have predefined locations in our continuous controller data. They also have ranges or values as well, and you can imagine or guess what those values are. 0 to 127, 0 to 127, etc., etc. So you can see how important that 0 to 127 uh, number is as it relates to MIDI, both continuous controller data as well as the values of each parameter, whether it's um, node on, node off, pitch velocity, or whether it's the actual values or parameters of our continuous controllers. So one of the things you may say is that, oh, wait a minute, Todd, the sustain pedal is either on or off. It's not a value from 0 to 127. So how does that work? Well, what they did was they said, all right, if that's the case, we'll do this. We'll go 0 to 63. That will be off. So any value from 0 to 63 we will consider as a sustain pedal off. Sustain pedal on will be any value greater than 63. So that's how they handle the on and off capabilities of certain continuous controller data like a sustain pedal on a piano. Also the pan information you may go well isn't there a center position on the knob? And then you can turn it to the left or to the right. Yes, you can. That's true. So if we go and actually look at a MIDI channel in Pro Tools, let me add one here real quick. What you'll see is that when you turn this knob, it's 64 on the left, and then in the center it's 0, and then to the right it is 63. So there again, it adds up to 127. Same with our volume here. Our volume knob, which is a continuous controller, volume knob, or our volume fader, continuous controller, number 7. If we look at that, you can see the numbers there as well, 0 to 127. 
So that's continuous controller data. It's separate data that can be sent discreetly via an individual continuous controller that can control other items on our synthesizer, such as the modulation wheel, volume, pan, sustain pedal, etc. So next we're going to show you a quick demo and demonstrate how all of these items uh, in the MIDI specification can be used to control our synthesizer.